Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, sorry about the delay. Thank you for your patience. And we can open up to Psalm 18. And this is one, of, there are only three Psalms, Psalms longer than this Psalm. So because of that, we're going to take this in two or three parts here over the next few days. So we're going to go through verses 1 through 15 today, and then we will just keep plugging through it next week. So um, this is likely written earlier in David's life, and scholars say it's, it's sometime on his ascent to the throne, so after King Saul is defeated, but before David takes that, that throne. So sometime in that time period, that is where scholars say this is, this is happening. Okay, And if you look at Psalm 18 in your Bible, it will say, To the choir master, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who addressed the words of this song to the Lord on the day when the Lord rescued him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Okay, So sometime after uh, the threat of Saul is extinguished, but before David's ascent to the throne. Now, what's interesting, though, is at the very end of David's life, in 2 Samuel 22, David is reflecting on all the good things God has done for him, and the words at the end of 2 Samuel 22 are almost identical to what's here in Psalm 18. So, it's written earlier in David's life, but it's also used by him at the end of his life as a reflection of everything God has, has done for him and how he's always delivered him. So David had that maturity and that perspective at a young age and continued to have it throughout his life and had it at the end of his age. So let's jump into this psalm. Here is verse 1. I love you, O Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. And so this isn't just David loving God because he has to or deciding to love God. This is, he, David is compelled to love God because of everything he's done for him. He's just absolutely in love with him. That's a great model for us. Okay, verse two. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The Lord is my rock. Okay, so a rock does a lot of things that we maybe don't think about for David. Uh, a rock can provide shade that's essential in scorching heat. Um, it can provide shelter and protection, big rocks with cracks in it. No doubt David had to, to hide in, in places like that when he was on the run from Saul, but he knows God is his rock. And it can also provide a firm place to stand and fight. We know David had many battles, as opposed to sinking sand. Okay, so the Lord is his rock. That's all the imagery that's going on with the rock. And my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, he says it again, in whom I take refuge. Verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. So David has seen the Lord do this numerous times. Okay, though it, it doesn't always come easy for David. Right? He goes through some tough times on his way to being delivered. Um, he's, he has tough things happen with his enemies, with his family. Um, tough things happen to him. But God always does deliver him. Okay, And he has that confidence in him early in life and at the end of his life. Okay, Let's read 4 and 5. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. So we talked about Sheol the other day, how it's this, it can be a separation from God. Sometimes it's depicted just as the, the place of death. But in those, those two verses, David is letting us in on the depth of his darkness and emotions because death threatened him at, at times during his life because of his enemies, because of Saul, because of other things going on. So he's letting us in on that, that emotion and that darkness, which sets it up for verse 6. What does David do about that? Because we all find ourselves in places like that, don't we? In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. And my cry to him 
reached his ears. So this is really interesting that David mentions the temple here because this is likely written during a time where Jerusalem was not under Israeli occupation. When, when Saul was defeated for a while, it's under enemy occupation. So why is David talking about the, the temple if he can't really get to the temple at this point? Well, the temple to David, it's not a place, just like the church to us is not a, a building. The temple is God's presence, okay? And and so the church, we know it's it's where believers are present and where God is, is also present with those believers. So David understands that, right? That even when he doesn't have access to the temple, God's presence is still with him, okay? Let's read on. Verse 7, Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled. So let's just read 7 through 15, because now God, David is going to describe God's power here in these verses. He's using a lot of imagery. The earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. Thick clouds dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, hailstones and coal of, coals of fire broke through his clouds. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. Wow, there, there's a lot there. So the, at the start of it, it's dramatic. The earth is reeling and rocking. It just describes that God's deliverance to David was dramatic, okay? And his power is great. God hears David's prayer, and he answer, he's not only answering it, but he is angry at the injustice that's happening to David and in the world, right? Because God is a just God. And so you see here his, his anger stirring up and you see that anger depicted with just incredible imagery from David um when you hear the the, he the heavens he, he bow bowed the heavens and came down it's the this imagery of the heavens opening up a hole in the atmosphere and God descending to earth it's just incredible this is the power that that David sees in the way that God has has delivered him and it shows just how, how powerful and, and, and good and just God is, especially at the end. David says he does all this at the blast of breath of your nostrils. Okay, if you feel the, the, the blast of breath of your nostrils, I don't know about you, but mine's not very powerful. But for, for the Lord, just the blast of breath of his nostrils is enough to conquer any evil, enough to defeat any enemy. Let's just, we'll stop there at, at Psalm 18 verse 15 today. When we, we read the Psalms, when we meditate on the Psalms, they're so powerful and enriching because God's word speaks to us in different seasons of our lives. We see different seasons in different Psalms. Okay, and We see all kinds of different emotions that we can connect with as well. Emotions from David in the Psalms. And some of the Psalms feel more helpless, right? You see his total distress, and he's raw with God in, in that emotion. But this one has a very positive perspective. This one has the perspective of God's power. David saying, yep, I've seen some trouble. I've seen some evil. But God has more power in those nostrils than evil could ever throw at me. And I've seen God reign supreme every single time. So for us, we can step back. We can, we can look around and, and see all the, the evil in our world. We can see all the, the evil in our nation. And it can be overwhelming. And we can be in that dark place. But when we read this, we're reminded of God's power. We can, we can sit back and take a deep breath. And remember that God's power is always greater. It always has been, as David shows us throughout his entire life. As we see throughout Scripture. 
And we remember that God's power is for us. That's what David is reminded of here as well. God's power is for us and he demonstrates that to us in the ultimate way when he takes that power and and pours it out for us in humility on a cross. It shows us that that God's power is to save us, that, that God's power is to redeem us, that God's power is used because he loves us. So no matter what the world throws at you, take comfort in that. Take comfort in not only God's power that was poured out for you on the cross for forgiveness, to be united with him eternally, but that power that rose him from the dead. And that same power lives in us. And one day too, we will experience that power in an eternal way. And until then, we just trust. We, we, we take that, that maturity and perspective from, from David and we apply it to our own lives. And we just put our trust in Jesus. We find comfort in that. So let's, let's praise him for that. Let's, let's thank him. Let's pray. Lord, your word is always so relevant. It is always so powerful. And we're reminded of your power today. Your great power. It's so easy to, to look around the world, get caught up in things and, and, and doubt you. Doubt where you are or doubt what you might be able to do. And yet we're reminded that your power is so much greater than, than any evil in this world. So Lord, we, we trust in that power. And let that power transform us today. Let that power give us joy in circumstances that don't make sense. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Have a blessed weekend. We'll see you Sunday morning. Reminder that Sunday morning at 9 and 10.30, those services will be outside with the tent. And so we encourage you to gather with us for that. But those services, uh, the 9 o'clock, will be streamed as well. So God's blessings. Take care. We'll see you soon.